morning and a very warm welcome to Worshipping Together at Home on the day in which we remember the baptism of Christ. Yes, I know it only seems like a couple of weeks ago since Christmas and we were celebrating his birth, but of course we've jumped on some 30 plus years now to the baptism. And we will of course go back the other way at the end of the month when we look at Candlemas. As we seem to be in for the long haul with worshipping together at home, I decided to go back to the sitting down position. It doesn't mean that you will have to have me sitting here doing nothing while you sing along to the hymns. But for now, let's come to our Heavenly Father and worship together. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Lord, we come before you like those who gathered on the banks of the Jordan. Through your word and the Holy Spirit, may heaven open to us today. Let us hear your voice as we submit to your will, with the obedience and humility of Christ. Amen. We gather today expecting to meet with God. Holy Spirit, come. We might hear God's voice in thunder and majesty. Holy Spirit, come. We might see God's power in flames of fire. Holy Spirit, come. We might see God's presence in visions and signs. Holy Spirit, come. We might see a glimpse of God's glory. Holy Spirit, come. Come among us today. Lord, we praise you for the gift of your Spirit. It turns us upside down and inside out. Comes to us when we least expect it and makes us the people of power that you want us to be. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to have the first of our hymns this morning now on Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cry. Of course, as we shall hear in our reading, John the Baptist came preaching a message of repentance. He told the people they needed to repent of their sins and, and turn again to Christ. And sometimes, you know, we need to take that message on board as well. Repentance isn't a one-off. We need to constantly return back to God and say sorry for the things that we say and do, which we know are unpleasing to him. So in a moment of quiet now, let's offer to God those things on our own hearts and minds for which we know we each need his gracious forgiveness.
you have a copy of the service sheet in front of you, please join in with the prayer of confession. Loving God, we confess that we are not living in the freedom that you offer to those who have been baptised, that we are sometimes overwhelmed by guilt and envy, that we are consumed by anger and greed, that we are inhibited by anxiety and fear, that we are sometimes passive or resentful or unforgiving. God of justice, hear our prayer for mercy, grant us forgiveness and give us your peace. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And a prayer of thanksgiving. We are God's people, chosen and marked by love. We rejoice to share in God's family name and delight to be created for glory. We are baptised by water and the Spirit and are released into the fullness of life. All that we have and all that we are, we offer in humble thanks to the God of our salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the collect for today. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 19 reading verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was at Corinth Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about twelve men in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, Forgive Our Foolish Ways.
Our second reading comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. John came baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I. The thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the 5th century AD, St Patrick baptised King Angus by full immersion. During the baptismal ceremony, So the story goes, St. Patrick leaned on his sharp pointed staff and inadvertently stabbed the king's foot. After the baptism was over, St. Patrick looked down at all the blood, realised what he'd done and begged the king's forgiveness. Why did you suffer this pain in silence? St. Patrick asked. The queen replied, I thought it was part of the ritual. Well, there may be more truth in that than meets the eye. This morning's gospel is all about the baptism of Jesus. This is one of the events that all of the three synoptic gospels, that's Matthew, Mark and Luke, describe. And so it was obviously an event that the early church saw as a great importance. As we learn about Jesus, it's impossible not to learn about his love for us. So what does Jesus' baptism teach us about our baptism? Why did Jesus bother to be baptised? You and I, we need to be baptised. We're sinners and we need those sins washed away. But Jesus is the sinless Son of God. What need is he to be baptised? Why did the sinless Son of God come to be baptised? The simple answer is that he could be joined with us and us with him in sharing our baptism. Jesus joined himself to us by baptism in the River Jordan. And when we're baptised, we're joined with Jesus. Baptism now saves you, not as a removal of physical dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a cleansed conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of the Father, as we're reminded in 1 Peter. We're joined to Jesus, and so through his prayer, we're made clean. It's not the outer dirt that's washed away, but the inner dirt of sin. Baptism isn't an insurance policy to heaven, which is what I often tell parents when I'm baptising their babies. God loves their baby just as much before the baptism service as he does afterwards. But baptism is a boarding pass to a lifetime with Jesus. And our baptism, we're joined with Jesus and given the invitation to get on the plane to take the boarding pass and to start the adventures of a lifetime. But after Jesus is baptised, the heavens open and we hear the voice of God. You are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. When God's pleased, nothing else matters. Think what is going on inside Jesus' head at this moment. Okay, I'm a son of God, or am I? Am I making it up? Am I crazy? Before he begins his ministry, God affirms publicly who he is. You are my son, whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. In all the dark days ahead, Jesus will be able to look back on that occasion and remember those words. You are my son, whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. 
And those words are not just for Jesus. Isaiah tells us, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. God gave you and I a name the day we were baptised. God said, you are my beloved child, and he doesn't change his mind. Remember that, not just on the good days, but on the awful days. Thank God that you are baptised, because it means something. It means you are my beloved child. And when God is pleased, nothing else matters. Well, you may be thinking, I, but I don't even remember being baptised. How can that be meant to help me? Well, I don't remember being born. But now, if I'd not been conceived, I'd have never been born. I wouldn't be standing here talking to you today, or actually sitting here this morning, because um, I wasn't, hadn't made up my mind whether I was going to be standing or sitting when I wrote this. So actually, being born was quite a significant event for me, and yet I don't remember anything about it. You may not remember our baptism, but somebody more important remembers. God remembers your baptism. God gave a name, you a name that day. God said, you are my beloved child, and he doesn't change his mind. And guess what? He doesn't forget either. The Gospels place a huge emphasis on the Holy Spirit. As the third century teacher Oregon puts it, Christ is born, the Spirit is his forerunner, Christ is baptised, the Spirit bears him witness. Christ is tempted, the Spirit leads him up. Christ ascends, the Spirit fills his place. Jesus is baptised and the Holy Spirit comes down. You can't miss the connection. It's not just like, Oh, the Holy Spirit happened to turn up that day. By the way, a few verses earlier, Jesus was baptised. No, Jesus is baptised and the Holy Spirit comes down. Like at waters of the flood, when it was a dove who showed that Noah was safe. So at the waters of baptism, it's a dove that shows the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is baptised and the Holy Spirit comes down. So too at our baptism, we are baptised and the Holy Spirit comes down. Luke in his gospel says it is after Jesus was baptised, as he was praying that the physical manifestation of the Spirit comes. Not in the middle of the baptism, but afterwards. Who knows how long afterwards? A few seconds, a few moments, a quarter of an hour, half an hour, who knows? Yet it is because Jesus is baptised that the Spirit comes down. Yet it is not immediate. We are baptised and the Spirit comes down. For some, they will never know a time since their baptism when the Spirit was not present. Yet for most of us, it's sometimes after we are baptised that we experience the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps 20 more years or so since that baptism, we experience that manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Being baptised is a bit like having a tap put in your bathroom. A tap is a rather essential piece of furniture. Putting a tap in it makes it a bathroom, but you still have to turn it on. Imagine a bathroom which stayed there for 80 years before being knocked down, and during that time, not one of the taps were ever turned on in the sink, shower or bath. Could you really call that a bathroom? I guess it's a moot point. In the same way, imagine someone who is baptised and yet the tap of the Holy Spirit is never turned on. Can you really call them a Christian? Again, it's a moot point. Often when we look at the great Christians of the past, like John Wesley, Martin Luther, they seem to have fire in their bones. Unfortunately, what we have in our bones is not fire, but ice cream, or so it seems. We're not just here for entertainment. If you want to be great, you have to have fire in your bones. We need to turn the tap on full to let the Holy Spirit flood into our lives. You shall be baptised with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The boarding pass isn't much use if you don't get on the plane. Jesus' baptism marks the start of his ministry. God reveals him to the world. Now John's ministry will end and Jesus begins. Jesus' baptism marks the start of his ministry. 
In the same way, our baptism is meant to mark the start of our ministry. Christianity is a plane on which there are no passengers. You've been given a boarding pass because you've got a job to do. I can look at each one of you and tell you that God has a job for you. You may think you just turned up for the ride or to watch, but there are no passengers. God has a job with your name on it. Baptism is meant to mark the beginning of our ministry, your ministry. The miracle of Jesus' baptism with heavenly voices and the Holy Spirit like a dove is a wow. But what happened in your baptism is no less of a miracle by any means. Your baptism was filled with Jesus and connected you to him. Your baptism was filled with the Holy Spirit and marked the start of his work in your life. Your baptism was witnessed by your Heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth, who smiled and said of you exactly what he said of Jesus. You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus lived his baptism. Are you living yours? Amen. We sing the hymn, Meekness and Majesty, Manhood and Deity, in perfect harmony, the man who was God. Sorry about the slight um, finger in the wrong place at the beginning of that uh, 
hymn. But now at least you know what the next hymn's going to be, don't you? I'm going to renew our baptismal vows, the vows that either somebody made on your behalf at your baptism, or if you were baptised as an adult, you would have stood and said. So please do join in with the response. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. May God, who has given you the desire to follow Christ, give you the strength to continue in the way. Let's just take a moment of quiet as we reflect on our baptism promises and the, those people for whom we made baptismal promises. Perhaps our children or our godchildren. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptised into your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for the day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us pray. Called together as one family by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray to God of our Father, through Jesus, the beloved Son, for all our needs. Jesus was confirmed in his mission by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to respond with confidence to the gift of the Spirit in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, the people of God, called through baptism to share in the royal priesthood of Christ and to uphold the sanctity of human life. We pray for the church all over the world this morning, wherever it is meeting and in whichever ways it's meeting. We pray for those worshipping at home alone, those worshipping at home with others, and those still able to worship in their churches. We thank you that we have been called in baptism, and that in baptism we are all one in Jesus Christ. Help us to reflect that in what we do both individually as, and as a church, so that all may come to know the light of Jesus Christ in their lives. We pray for the church here in our benefice, for the main changes it's undergone and continues to undergo. We thank you that we are a church that's alive, and therefore change does happen. And we thank you for the way that's in, been embraced, and we pray for the changes to come, that we will continue to grow and develop and enfold those around us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who govern our country and especially for those who witness to the value of human life. May the truth prevail in public policy. We pray for all those who are tasked with trying to find answers and ways forward in this current pandemic. We particularly pray for our politicians who have a difficult job trying to keep on top of what's happening, but we realise that we don't always agree with what they have to say, and that can lead to difficulties. But we pray that we may do what is right to protect the lives of others and to find a way forward back to whatever kind of life normality will take. Thank you that for those who are working hard to keep other parts of our government in and 
our daily lives continually. Those who are responsible for Brexit and the fallout from that. And we pray for those responsible for keeping peace and unity, not just in this country, but throughout the world. And we pray for those countries that are torn apart by war or violence and injustice. And so let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the children in our schools, the citizens of tomorrow, and all who teach them. May the new generation speak out for the values of all. We pray for education at the moment, as so many of our children are not able to go to school. But we know that that is for the greater good and for their own protection. We pray for families struggling at home to try and educate their children. For young people uncertain of what the future may hold in terms of exams and university and the many other job opportunities and things ahead of them and for the many years it may take to recover from the current situation in their education. We pray for our own local schools in Salheim, Little Plumstead and here in Ratcliffe. We pray for the teachers and all members of staff who are doing a good job each day and trying to continue to teach in whatever way is possible. We pray that at this time, many young families who are struggling to cope with food and financially may also find some help and realise that all they need to do in so many circumstances is just to ask. And we particularly pray for the families that we have been able to, to help and walk alongside at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or anxious, the weary and the despondent. May they know comfort and peace. And in a moment of quiet, we pray for those known to us. Pray that your healing hand will be upon them and that your will will be done. And so let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have now passed into eternal life, giving thanks for their lives and remembering all those who mourn. For their lives and for all that they will go on meaning to so many people and for their eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. We join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to sing that final hymn, the one that you got a, a preview of when I um, got my finger in the wrong place. Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son.
And so we come to our sending out prayer and blessing. Lord, when the Holy Spirit came at your baptism, it prepared you for the world. Make us ready to go with you so we can declare you to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love and those whom you ought to love this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, that's the end of our worshipping together at home for this week. I hope you found the, the service useful and it's given you the opportunity to worship, whether you're in your PJs, in your slippers or with your cup of coffee in your hand. Whatever it is, it's certainly warmer than it would have been in one of our church buildings this morning. It's really lovely that you've, you've been able to join in. And I hope that um, you're remembering that if you are sitting at home feeling a bit lonely or a bit fed up, you can always pick up the phone and, and talk to somebody or drop them an email or, you know, you could eat or even Zoom them if you've got the opportunity to. I don't actually like Zooming. So if you want to talk to me, pick up the phone and let's let's have a let's have a chat. And you know what? I can always come and talk to you on the doorstep as well. So as long as you stay inside and, and I stay outside, of course, that's that's absolutely that's absolutely fine. Well, I hope you have a, a good week. My thanks as always to Annette Jude for providing the music for us this week. And um, I'll see you again next week. Until then, take care and bye for now.